My name is S. Craig Zoller. I am a, a novelist and musician, and uh, as of 2014, a film director as well. Stephen Craig Zoller is a jack of all trades when it comes to being an artist, a published author, comic book artist, a member of a metal band, and even at one point a director of photography, Zoller also takes the mantle of a film writer and director. As of right now, in 2022, S. Craig Zoller has released just three movies, those being Bone Tomahawk, Brawl in Cell Block 99, and his most recent Dragged Across Concrete. With just these three releases, however, it's clear how much emphasis Zoller puts on his characters, their stories, and the world they inhabit. Employing an impartial, minimalistic style within his filmmaking, Zoller is able to effectively provide an unbiased stage for tales of morality to naturally unfold, where morally questionable men will go to great lengths to do what they think is right, even when faced with their own doom. Looking at the mise-en-scene of his work, Zoller is able to make settings that showcase and drive home the story of the characters. They provide a stage for their plight while also emphasizing the characters' downward spiral. The western town of Bright Hope in Bone Tomahawk feels authentic and lived in, a beacon of relative safety for its characters. When they're finally on horseback heading towards the villainous troglodytes to save some cherished townspeople, the characters start out in rolling lush green fields, signifying just how close to home and safety they still are. As the film progresses and they approach where the troglodytes live, however, these fields give way to rougher terrain with less vegetation until finally they reach the dead wasteland where the troglodytes live. It makes for an effective visual metaphor for just how far from safety these characters are. It also makes for an ominous forewarning of the horrors that await them once they're captured, with the dimly lit caves they're taken to being their own personal hell on earth. We're in hell. Brawl on Cell Block 99 shares a similar structure, with each new prison cell that Bradley is moved to being worse than the last, until finally reaching his goal, the titular Cell Block 99. Located deep in the bowels of a maximum security prison, this last cell is extremely dark and dirty, with nothing but a hole for a toilet. It appropriately feels like an inescapable dungeon in a castle, and it's a great visual cue for just how far Bradley has fallen. Wanting to put a clear focus on the story and characters on screen, Craig Zoller's camera work shoots everything effectively without any flashy techniques. Characters regularly converse with one another in medium shots, while full shots are used to establish and expose their positioning in a scene, or to show some sequence in its visual and impartial entirety. This usually pertains to any violence that's in his films. He also uses multiple perspectives to combine the shot types, with multiple characters being on frame at once at different distances from the screen. Occasionally, he does implement dollying or tracking shots to follow character movement, like when Buddy is walking through the various prison hallways. Rarely does Zoller break from these camera techniques, however. Rather than having the camera work liven the movie up with certain style, he uses it to simply show his stories as they are in their purest form. This camera work, of course, works in tandem with the editing of his films, which is just as dedicated to showing the story without distraction. Rather than stylistic flourishes or regular quick cuts, Zoller's films instead are filled with longer takes. Characters are allowed to do actions and exchange dialogue uninterrupted. In general, my philosophy with how to pace things is have it on screen as long as it's interesting. With characters regularly sharing the same shots, it's easy for the exchanges between them to happen in one continuous take. Certain sequences of violence are shown in a similar fashion as well, capturing the weight of these events in real time. This slow burn style of editing allows scenes to breathe and events to truly hit home with the audience. One thing I think that unites all three of my movies is they're character driven and another thing that unites all three is my interest in world building. Sound in Craig Zoller's film sets out to similarly immerse viewers in his worlds. Virtually all the sound featured in his films are diegetic in nature. The detailed foley in his work helps put the viewer in the space of the characters, like with Bone Tomahawk, whose dry and naturalistic sounds create a convincing, unfiltered soundscape. 15 minutes till they get there. Let's hurry. 
Do you hear that? This one's a gust. That's a real musical gust. And it's ominous. While his other two films have just as convincing Foley, they also implement R&B songs that always come from a radio somewhere in the scene. These songs will help in developing a tone. Being the musician he is, Zoller writes all the music for his films with a co-composer. This includes the R&B songs that sound straight out of the 70s, allowing him to tailor his soundtrack to evoke an appropriate mood for a scene. The final confrontation of Dragged Across Concrete leads to two opposing characters momentarily working together, where a soft and overly sad song plays as one character tows the car of the other. They don't trust each other in the slightest, and the song foreshadows that the momentary partnership will most likely end with tragedy. This constant use of diegetic sound allows the viewers to feel like they're with the characters, identifying with their situations on a much more personal level. key to S. Craig Zoller's work is minimalism. His subdued approach in filmmaking provides a sharp focus on the stories he tells and the characters they depict. Diegetic sound, patient editing, observant cinematography, and progressively changing mise-en-scene all serve to place us in the trenches with his characters, allowing us to witness their plights firsthand without distraction. At times, it feels like his films are like stage plays, but rather than breaking the facade of his films, it instead allows the purity of his storytelling to take center stage. Go! 